That's it. Just oh, I'm actually gonna talk to her. Sorry. One job. Sorry. sorry. I'm Maya and I'm sophomore. So what's your president of? All right, cool. So we're gonna get to the bio because we don't have that much time left. All right, so. The DJ Hollywood, originally from Brooklyn, DJ Hollywood energizes crowds throughout the upstate New York capital region. Woo. I love attending when I can. He has also gravitated to music throughout his life and hopes to bring versatility in his music mixing wherever he goes. Drawing inspiration from many, including his mother, Sean P. Diddy Combs. Take that, take that, take that. <laughs> Hollywood aims to inspire others with his daily grind and optimistic energy. He has been featured in the Alt Weekly, PBS, ABC, and has played music at venues such as Rivers Casino, Night Owl Saratoga, and Albany Capital Center. Okay. DJ Hollywood is an influencer who curates shows for independent artists and hosts a radio segment on WCDB 90.9 FM to highlight the arts. I hope y'all, y'all even listen to radio. You're still oh. <laughs> Especially in music. He believes music brings energy, joy, nostalgia, and good vibes only. Mm. Hollywood quickly learned that with being a DJ, it's more than music. It is a platform to move not only bodies, but also the human spirit, to change the mood of an entire room, to share life with other artists, and space with people who share a passion for music. DJ Hollywood's latest venture is titled Hashtag More Music Less Violence, which is a community concert series focused on bringing creatives of all ages together along with community members through positive music. For DJ Hollywood, it's more than music. It's all about giving an impactful experience. And with that being said, <laughs> here. 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 I appreciate y'all coming through. Um, first and foremost, I like, what's your name? Is it Ace? Ace Wet'em Up. Ace, Ace, Ace Wet'em Up? Yeah, like Wet'em Up. Like. Oh, well, I, I'm explain that, but I, 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 I probably don't need you to explain. I get it though. I get it. I get it. But um, I like that you, uh, you know, with along with your name, you introduced your uh, your alias, you know, and um, that's a huge part of uh, you know branding. So that's dope. Now I already know your alias without you know even knowing you, who you are. Um, so yeah, uh, you know, shout out to Dia for you know bringing me through to Union College. It's my first time on this campus. Um, so, so yeah, thank y'all for uh, having me. So I know we're short on time, so I'm gonna try to you know get through this, and you guys get as much information as possible. All right. Short video. Yeah, 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 yeah. Who can, who can, um, can tell me how 
my size, I said I'm dope in that. For sure, for sure. Damn. So uh, I mean, that, that was kind of a joke. I didn't realize that. that was a subconscious thing, but that was pre public speaking days, right? Um, I wanted to raise my opportunity. All right, so um, things that wasn't included in the bio. So I'm from Brooklyn, New York. Um, grew up in East Flatbush. Uh, my parents are um, from the Jamaican descent. Um, I'm actually a first generation graduate from uh, my family. Literally nobody else in my household has, um, you know, a associates or, you know, even a bachelor. So, you know, it's definitely a blessing. Um, HBCC alumni, uh, I came up here in 2010 to uh, Troy, New York and went to uh, Hudson Valley. Eventually graduated from there and in 2018 graduated from uh, SUNY Albany with a degree in communications and a minor in psychology. Um, so yes, I am also a DJ, as, as you may know by now, um, entrepreneur and event curator. So um, along with all that, I put together events. Um, after graduated from UAlbany, started my own business, which is uh, More Than Music LLC. And um, yeah, and I'm also a music lover. Uh, it only would make sense for me to be a DJ and a music lover. That wouldn't really, you know, that would be very contradicting if I didn't like music. Um, and we'll get into that a little bit more. Uh, fun fact, I don't know if you guys know what uh, the Eddie Awards is. Anybody? It's okay. Um, so I got a 2022, is one of my most recent accomplishments. Um, I got an Eddie Award, and uh, I don't know if you guys know the guy on the right. Uh, his name is DJ True Master, and he's like uh, one of like the legend DJs um, from out here upstate New York. And uh, he actually presented me the award. But we're short on time, so we're going to keep it pushing. And you know, you can check it out on YouTube if anybody. Right? Check it out. Thanks. Um, so how did I get my name? Everybody wants to know this. Um, if you see on the right over here, you know, it's not typically spelled uh, H-O-L-L-Y-W-O-O-D or W-O-O-D. It's um, W-8-D. And um, fun fact, in high school, I wore the number eight. And, uh, you know, just for, you know, uh, out of fun, people used to just call me Hollywood. And just because I always were, I ironically would have my shades on right now. What's up, Ace? Ace, what am I? Were you tough? Were you tough? <laughs> Was I tough? Yeah, I played football, so... I'm an athlete to this day. I'm going to just leave it at that. Oh, wow. So, um, yeah, so I wore the number eight, and they called me Hollywood. And legit, in 2010, I think Instagram, that's when Instagram popped off. And uh, I got on Instagram and had to make an Instagram name, but Hollywood was way too common. So um, I don't know how it actually clicked in my head, but I was like, oh, like, well, if I put the eight instead of the two O's, then I could, you know, call myself Hollywood and it still, you know, makes sense. And then it kind of stuck with, you know, my football number as well. So that's kind of where that came from. And then eventually in probably about 2015, 2016, um, I shifted into, I literally Googled and was like, oh, there's no DJ Hollywood with the eight. Nobody thought about that. And on all platforms, I just, you know, created accounts, DJ Hollywood with the eight. So that's kind of where that came from. I know somebody's gonna ask that. <laughs> Uh, all right, boom, let's get into the good stuff. So shout out some brands that you can recognize from this picture. Nike, Olympics. There you go, there you go, exactly. And uh, ironically, there's no wording of any of these logos, right? But because of their brand recognition, you recognize them. So whatever they've done to you know make it uh, consistent for you guys to figure out, oh, okay, well, this is Twitter, this is Target, this is Apple, this is Nike. You know, they do a good job of putting their brands in, you know, in the consumer's face. So once you see it, you can't, you know, overlook it. So now this is something that could be, you know, this is something that's very interesting and you guys will probably, you know, uh, take into consideration going forth. Um, when brands pick their coloring, uh, it's actually very strategic. Um, as you see, yellow, um, optimism, clarity, warmth. Uh, green is more friendly. Um, red, excitement. Purple, creative. Blue, trust, peaceful for green. And when you think about it, you know, uh, when you see people promoting um, the Impossible Burger now, it's always in green, you know, just because it's a more healthier option. So it's um, that's something to think about. 
and you know uh, gray or white or just simple black is just you know a sleek look and you know neutral and calm and another thing too when you think about it uh they say red and orange is uh like trigger colors for like you want to be hungry so there's a lot of psychology that goes into you know people building their brands so keep that in mind as well um who knows this guy Yes, King James. So this is a person who's built his brand so strong to the point that LeBron could stop playing basketball today and still make millions off of his name and his endorsements and his brand of you know being the quote unquote king. Um, LeBron switched teams, as you see right here. He went. He started off at the Cavs as uh, his hometown in Cleveland. That he went to the Heat, everybody hated him because he teamed up with, you know, started a super super team thing. That he went back to the Cavs, then went to the Lakers, and after all of that, people were still supporting LeBron James, buying his sneakers, and you know, still calling him the king because at the end of the day, you know, he's proven that his brand is, you know, is on 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 King Tiny, right? And uh, he, as you see him with the sneakers down here. Um, kids these days literally will buy his sneakers because it's LeBron James. Like they don't even know. They're like, it, I don't know if any of you seen like like Mike, where where Bow Wow put on the sneakers and he felt like he was, you know, the best in the world. But there's kids out there in the world who legit think, well, if I get LeBron James sneakers, I can be the king. Um, to the point that he's even doing movies as well. I don't know if any of you seen Space Jam Two. I didn't see it, but um, heard mixed reviews on it. But Either way, LeBron being a uh, a basketball player, a superstar basketball player, now he's doing acting, you know, being a star, um, you know, uh, in his own big screen movie, it, sa it says a lot. Um, and lastly, uh, he has, uh, I promise, I don't know if any of you knew that LeBron started his own, you know, school um, called the I Promise School. And you see all the benefits of, you know, going to the school and with, you know, his brand, people are highly invested in, you know, saying like, I want to give LeBron James a million dollars because, you know, I know he's going to be at the benefit of the youth. All right, moving on. Who knows this person? Yeah, yeah that's my baby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so Rihanna. Rihanna has built her brand up so much that she doesn't even release music anymore. She has built up Fenty to the point that, you know, she can basically- Shout out Fenty skin. Okay. Yeah, sure, yep. Yeah. Ace put him up, so that's my guy, Ace put him up. <laughs> so, yes, so a bunch of brands are like, well, uh, Rihanna is a superstar and her name alone is, you know, where it's at. So we're gonna invest in Rihanna. Um, along with that now, like I said, she started her own her own brand, which is Fenty, and ladies love it. Lady, there's people who probably never okay. even listen to a Rihanna song, huh? And then, you know, men love it. Yeah, Fenty oh. skin, you know? Yes, 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 mm -hmm. correct, mm -hmm. correct. I stay corrected. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, nonetheless, you know, people are still down to support it because uh, the, not the brand, but more so the name behind the brand. Um, so now, uh, when it comes to brand building, you want to ask yourself why, okay? What is your why? Why do you want to start this brand? Um, who are the people that, you know, you want this brand to help? And um, why do you feel like it will succeed? Um, now the next thing is finding your primary client, all right? So your primary client would be the person who you initially, uh, you know, they will be buying your product. So for example, if I'm selling Fenty skin, I'm not gonna go into uh, a mechanic store, you know, and try to sell mechanics Fenty skin because mechanics think about cars, they don't really care about, you know, Fenty skin. Maybe they do, but probably not, all right? Um, and your secondary client is basically the people who are almost next in line. So for example, I teach DJ lessons to kids, but my primary client wouldn't necessarily be the, the kid. It would probably be their parent because the parent pays for you know the kid's services. So yeah, that's something to think about. Um, and then who is your ideal client, all right? So, you can have your primary, you can have your secondary, but really think who is the perfect person that you would want to you know, be your client. Somebody who's easygoing or somebody who's very particular about their stuff. Um, and that's just stuff to consider when you know, getting into branding. 
Um, yeah, so we all have a story to tell. Um, I'm super big on that, and you know, we are all in the same room right here, but um, you know, we will all tell this story. If we had to repeat this, this presentation back to someone, um, we would all tell this story completely different. Um, and you know, you see Kanye over here. I don't know if any of you've seen the Kanye uh, documentary, but that is a great um, you know, representation of, you know, people will kind of see you as crazy until they really get to understand you or get like a backstory of who you really are. And um, on the bottom, you see me put, uh, you might have a brand and don't even know it because, you know, we all are a brand, you know, whether you, you know, your, your first and last name is a brand, you know, your, your last name, your parents, they have a brand in a sense, but you have to be more conscious in um, how you basically position yourself into a brand standpoint. Um, you know, my real name is Mario Johnson, and before I was DJ Hollywood, <laughs> I got from there, before I was DJ Hollywood, Mario was a brand, you know, like I used to go around, party, support people and all that stuff, but people knew me for, you know, being a, a, a supporter of, you know, music. And then it trickled over into me being DJ Hollywood. So, you know, having to convert over from that party promoter person to the person actually, you know, DJing the parties was a complete, you know, different switch of things. So, like I said, just keep that in mind that, you know, we all have a story and, you know, start building your brand. It's never, it's never too late, it's never too early. Um, a big thing that I love is, you know, finding your passion and your purpose, and then you mesh those two, and you see I left the middle um, as blank because you never know what can happen, you know, in, in, the, in between of finding your passion and your purpose. Um, a lot of people are like, what's my passion? What's my purpose? Um, it's something that I really can't answer for you, but if you really sit down and, you know, think about what do I really like doing and what's something that... I could see myself doing every single day and not getting tired of it. And, you know, I really appreciate this. So like I said, for me, it was music. And I built, you know, a lot of my, you know, uh, jobs and careers around doing music. Like for example, I'm doing a presentation right now around branding, around my brand, which is music. So, you know, it's just really putting that into uh, consideration. Um, I got this famous quote that I came up with one day uh, Adia was on Instagram Live and uh, she tapped in with me and she was like, yo, that's actually really, really good. You should, um, you know, you should run with that. So it's called Don't Force It, Find It. So um, it's kind of self-explanatory, but, you know, when you're trying to find your passion and your purpose, um, you don't have to force it. You'll, most of the time, you know, you'll find it and it'll click and it'll kind of just make sense for you. Um, so social media, we are in the age of social media, so you should use this to the utmost extent, literally to the utmost extent. So my top three is Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. And then for honorable mention, we got TikTok on, 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 on the bottom, right? So for Instagram, it's for my friends. When I say friends, even if any of you in here follow me right now, I consider you basically my, my friend, you know? We, we met, we interacted. And, um, you know, any, even a client, you know, now we built that relationship. You gotta build that relationship where, you know, you're friends now, you know? Um, Facebook is more so for family. Uh, I do have friends on there as well, but that's more so for, um, you know, the, the, uh, the Johnson family, you know, to keep it in-house. Um, and YouTube, I say is for the world because anybody can go on YouTube and end up finding your content, you know? Um, the algorithm of YouTube is crazy where you could, they, they call it going down the rabbit hole, where you can type in one thing, then it suggested this video, then it suggests this video, then it suggests this video, and now you're like an hour, two hours into YouTube. Um, so keep that in mind in being able to use multiple platforms to kind of project your brand when you do end up building it. Um, I don't want to mention TikTok because TikTok is the same thing as the world because everybody's on TikTok. Specifically, uh, kids started off on TikTok, you know, the younger generation, but now, you know, adults are seeing the importance of using TikTok and learning new stuff, how to bake, how to fix things, how to, you know, uh, rearrange your house and stuff like that. <laughs> how to dance, for sure. That's where it all started to. Um, and I put the quote on the bottom, out of sight, out of mind, because um, the less you promote your brand, the less people will think about it, because um, they're, granted, Probably what you're doing, there's somebody else in your city, in your state, in the world doing what you do. So, you know, you have to keep the consistency of showing your brand and showing up for your brand. 
Oh, oh, night. I mean, so I don't know if you guys know what this is. But I'll talk about it after. after. So why the capella's brain is it more? Um, well, because it's not because the tunes is cool, right? But we really That's trying to inspire people because. Like he said, it is more than music, because maybe your dream isn't to pursue music, but I'm still trying to inspire people that want to go after whatever they want to go after fearlessly, too. You know what I'm saying? I understand, you know, the word humble or whatever like that, or just certain, just certain dialogue that people use to, you know what I'm saying? Don't, don't small up yourself, you know what I'm saying? Whatever it is that you want to do, you know what I'm saying? Whatever your dream is, whatever it is, just pursue it fearlessly, same way. Facts. Facts. So, yeah, man, so let the people know. All right, boom. So that was uh, my guy Compella Gray. That's the homie. But um, I don't know if you guys know the song uh, Dallas that was like going crazy within the past year. Yeah. And um, yeah, we ended up doing an interview. But just off of me doing that interview and having that on YouTube, um, somebody else going in and typing Compella Gray interview, um, my interview will most likely pop up in the algorithm of you know the other interviews. But along with that. You know, just like he said, the, the brand of Capella Gray is to basically motivate people. You know, even if you're not interested in music, it's about having faith in yourself and, you know, what you're, you know, what you could possibly do. Um, so now, now to TikTok real quick. So I don't know if I could play this, but um, so on TikTok, I did a random video. And this is why you should be able to, you know, spread your plaque, spread your brand on multiple platforms. But I did this video and legit it accumulated. Three million views. <laughs> super, super random. Let me see if I can play it. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Literally, that 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 is it. <laughs> that is it. So uh, what I did was, so somebody mentioned on. Um, social media they were like well if you post three videos in a day you guys can try this out and see for yourself post three videos in a day um with like trending sounds that um you know one of the videos within the three will catch in the algorithm and then if you keep consistently do it that you know eventually you'll go viral so that's exactly what happened and i did it probably maybe about two weeks in a row i posted three videos a day um and then one day i looked at my my tiktok and it was just it was like five hundred thousand views and then it was like million dollars of views and I was like there's no way this is gonna keep going then it went to two million and then now it's currently at three million so I don't even I barely use TikTok anymore but just because that video is still bubbling on TikTok like randomly I would go in there and have like another 20 followers 40 followers so I have about like maybe 8,000 something followers on uh TikTok just off of this video um so yeah like I said you know don't be scared to you know spread your brand you know on all platforms um the three C's, and I love these and I live by them. So the three C's, content, connections, and consistency, all right? So you see what I just did, that was that was content. You know, you gotta be able to make content. And some people are like, well, what do I do for content? There's other people's, you know, everybody's posting content all the time. And you don't have to copy exactly what they do, you know, find a way to spin it into your brand. If, um, you know, if somebody posts something about, uh, like baking tips you can switch it over to dj tips or you know um you know teaching tips you know and just don't be don't be scared to put your spin on you know things like it's not even copying but it's more so um you know uh inspiration you could say rather than copying um connections uh you know using social media you can connect with a bunch of people you know um it is a worldwide platform that you know we need to take advantage of especially within our generation um, I'm pretty sure most of us in here are computer savvy and you know, know, know how to use the internet, know how to Google, and make sure you do your research. Um, I went out to uh, Cleveland, Cleveland, Ohio, randomly one day. Not randomly, I had some reason why there, but um, I went out to Cleveland, Ohio, and I didn't know what to do one night. So what I did was I went to the hashtags and I Googled like Cleveland events and like Cleveland DJs and um, ended up DMing somebody and they ended up giving me a, a place to go to um, and then I ended up making a, a super big connection with one of the DJs that you know I met at that that uh, that event that night. So um, yeah, like I said, don't be scared to you know make those connections. And then consistency, I just talked about it with the TikTok thing. Um, you know, the the internet and the algorithm loves when we're consistent, but most of all, you know, people who are supporting us love to see us consistently. You know, keep on going. Um, you know, we see a lot of people. 
uh, they, they make a post this day, they go MIA for like six months, make another post. Um, and even if that's you, that's, that's, not, that's not a problem, but when it comes to building a brand, you have to be consistent with it so people know that you know, you're, you're serious about building your brand. All right. Uh, boom. So uh, brands sometimes build their cells. So this comes right here to um, the More Music, Less Violence uh, concert series that I put together. Um, the most recent one was in Schenectady, New York. Um, the first one was in Albany, New York, uh, and there was another one I did in Troy, New York. So because we're short on time, I'm only going to play one of them for you. This is what it's all about bringing communities together and fighting against gun violence fight against all type of violence in our community and bring a peace to this world. There's a lot of young people, and I see it here with a lot of talents, tapping, to, tapping into their potentials and becoming more of this institution of music, which I love what you do, is substitute of violence. And the only way we can make it happen is y'all sitting in this room right here, this community. Let's keep this energy going. So we're talking about 4,000 boys and girls club in Detroit was recognized as number two in the nation for leadership and character and young. Okay, let's sign them out, guys. Let me sign them out. So I decided to do a pop-up outside performance, and the feedback from that was great. And uh, you know, people were asking, like, you know, when's the next one? And with branding, people will, you know, tell you, you know, what they're looking for. And it's always good to listen to the, uh, you know, your fans, the consumer, whatever it is, because they will tell you what they want. 
Um, and when you take that into consideration, you don't have to fully, you know, change your whole entire brand to uh, benefit the consumer. But it's definitely it definitely makes sense to you know take it into consideration. Um, and now I'm about to go into the fourth uh, more music less violence, which will be in Saratoga on June 26th, which is the last Sunday. So you know if you wanna you wanna pull up and catch a vibe and join the movement, come through. All right, and. Uh, that is it. Yeah, make sure you uh, follow me on all, all social platforms on the bottom too. And I got some stickers for y'all too, so y'all can you know, stay tight there. But uh, yeah, any um any questions? Yes. Okay. Um, my question is like, how do you keep your brand, but like your like yourself separate? You know what I mean? Like your life separate? Because I know you like you were like, oh, my name's DJ Hollywood, but my you know my government is like Mario. Stuff. Like, do you prefer being called TJ Hollywood or do you prefer being called Mario? Like, how do you keep that separate or do you keep that separate? Uh, that's a good question. Um, at this point, uh, so it's funny. So I can I can tell where someone almost met me on depending on like the name that they call me. So if somebody says, "Oh, hey, like Mario," I know like you know me beyond me being a DJ, or you probably knew me like when I worked at the Boys and Girls Club or something like that. Or if somebody says, hey, Rio, like I know a certain point in time of people that met me that called me Rio or, you know, Hollywood. Um, the average person does call me Hollywood because that's kind of how I introduce myself. I don't even introduce myself as like, hey, I'm Mario anymore. I say, hey, I'm Hollywood because, and this is a branding thing, that's just like ace what I'm up, right? Uh, if, if, <laughs> listen, 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 no. listen, no. so if, if, the first time I ever met him, and he's like, "Hey, my name is East Up. That's all I know. That's all I know him for now, right? So every time I see him, I'm gonna refer that name to him, right? So say he was like, "Hey, like I'm a music artist, and my name is East Up. I'm like, "Oh, okay. Well, what kind of music do you have? You know, he introduced himself as his brand first, which it, it all depends. It's a time and a place, you know. But um, yeah, the the checks get cut to DJ Hollywood, so I introduce myself as, "Hey, I'm DJ Hollywood, and now." You know I'm a DJ. If you need a DJ, I'll be at your services. So yeah. Any other questions? Um, sure. Okay. Um, my question for you is, how do you keep question I would say my younger self I would say um, it was it was probably presented within the, within the uh, presentation but I say you know follow your purpose and follow what you enjoy doing um, it doesn't have to be music it doesn't have to be anything creative you know you could be the most techiest person in the world but if that's what you love doing then you know uh, follow it and then you know I'm big on you know do what makes you happy and um, you know whatever it is if you want to do nails if you want to design wigs, if you want to be a dance teacher, you, whatever it is, whatever it makes you, if you want to travel the world, you know, um, whatever makes you happy, you know, just uh, follow it and don't force it, find it. Okay. Okay. Um, can we give DJ have another round of applause? Maybe I'll be saying, I know y'all may or may not have class, um, but I truly appreciate it. Do not leave this room. Yes, I'm pressuring you uh, without following him. Especially on Instagram. Um, it's worth the follow. It's follow definitely back worth the follow. You follow back? Yeah, I got you. I got you. <laughs> it's yeah, it Hollywood, follow. but I ain't Hollywood. <laughs> and um, also, your support system, I, that's, that was my first question that left me. Um, but yeah, you want to make sure that people are practicing what they preach. Like, y'all saw me in that video. I'm nobody special necessarily. Um, but like, giving opportunities once you are also yourself, like, able to do so. Like, he's someone who does that, and I appreciate that. And yeah, that's a wrap. Thank you, Hollywood. Yeah, those are favorite violin. And cops merch because I got three hats. Okay. And yeah, got, facts, facts. There's merch on deck for sure. Right. But yeah, I appreciate y'all. Hope y'all enjoyed. Hope y'all took, you know, absorbed something from this presentation. This is my first branding presentation, by the way, too. So yeah, I hope y'all enjoyed. Thank you for coming.
pasó? I can make him a plate. Yeah, we have to go upstairs anyways. How much um tomato basil? Wait to get my chicken. This is a bit. It's the only, the one and only energy checking in with DJ Hollywood at Union College. You know, we'll be back. It's a movie. Viral. Wow. Good bow.